and welcome back i hope you're all doing well so i wanted to put together a quick video today uh, before the georgia texas game kicks off in about 7 30 on linux desktop security now this was brought to my attention by a viewer and i thought it was a great idea and in fact it was a video i had planned anyway so i figured i'd go ahead and knock it out and i want to offer you some tips and tricks that hopefully will help you to especially if you're a newer user uh, will hopefully help you help to enhance your linux experience and your desktop security maybe even give you a little more peace of mind. So some of the things we're going to cover, um, we've talked about before in, in a previous video, I believe it was the uh, most common mistakes made by new Linux users, but I think they bear repeating. So, you know, repetition is the roadway, the pathway to perfection. So we'll go ahead and bring them up and talk about them here again. And those topics are going to be upgrading your system, deleting unused apps, uh, we're going to set up our system to force us to change our password after a specified number of days. We're going to go over how to disable your root login. We're going to talk about installing a firewall, using a firewall. We're going to talk a little bit about AppArmor and what it is and what it does and how to get it installed. Typically, it's usually installed anyway with your Pop! OS installed for using Pop! OS, but we'll go ahead and go through that whole process just in case. Then we're going to wrap it up with a few suggestions of mine to you on better OPSEC while you're out there surfing the web. All right, so with that said, um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So why do we wanna keep our system up to date? Well, as with any type of software, keeping up to date uh, does help to protect you against different, uh, different vulnerabilities that are found in the software and the applications. And of course, the developers work to plug those holes. It also keeps your system up to date with latest drivers. So if you've used Linux for any amount of time at all, I'm sure you've probably opened up the terminal at least once or twice. So to do an update is very simple. You just type in sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade, do a hyphen Y and the hyphen Y tells it that yes, you wanna go ahead and continue with the installation process when that question pops up. So you don't have to sit here and hit Y and hit enter. Put in our password and it'll do its thing. If I can type my password in right. There we go. All right, so we're gonna X out of this. Now, the other way to do this is to go into your Pop Shop. And if you're using Pop OS, and by the way, the, in the videos that we make, or that I make rather, um, what we do, what we talk about, typically works on Ubuntu and Linux Mint as well. So open up your Pop Shop, come over to the top right-hand side, and you'll see three lines. Click on that, that's settings. And then you'll wanna click on the updated and installed software choice selection. And then up here, you'll see that we have uh, runtime updates. So we'll go ahead and hit update and let it do its thing. And it's finished. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. So what's the difference between update and upgrade? You might be wondering that. Um, the difference is, is that update updates the local package index about available package, uh, package versions. Upgrade actually installs or downloads and installs the updates. It's pretty simple. And essentially the pop shop does the same thing. The difference though, is that when you do it through the terminal, you're, you have a bit more of a guarantee that you're getting the latest updates and with the pop shop, uh, not so much. All right, so let's move on to the next section and we'll talk about removing apps that you no longer use. All right, so removing unused apps, why do we want to do that? Well, basically uh, for one, getting rid of apps that you're no longer using frees up space for other apps that you may want to use or games or whatever. Secondly, as with anything, uh, more is not necessarily better. The more apps you have on your system, the more potential there are for security vulnerabilities and more potential entry ways for an attacker to get in. So how do we get rid of apps? Well, again, very simple, and you probably already know this, but let's go through it again real quick. There are a couple of ways of getting rid of an app. Uh, first of all, you can just type in sudo apt remove, and then the name of the package that you want removed, hit enter, put in your password, and it'll do, it'll do its thing. The second option is doing auto remove sudo apt auto remove, and then the name of the package, hit enter, again, put in your password, let it do its thing, and you're finished. And then the third way is sudo apt purge, and again, the name of the package, hit enter, put in your password, and it'll do its thing. So what's the difference between these three? Well, the difference is remove, it does remove the package, but it leaves behind the configuration files, plugin settings, and, and data. Purge, on the other hand, removes everything, so all that's gone. Um, so really, if there's an app that you're not using currently, but you may want to use in the future, then use 
sudo app remove and all that data, the configuration files will stay in place. So when you reinstall the app at a later date or down the road, it'll, you can kind of pick up where you left off. Purge on the other hand, gets rid of everything. And now we have auto remove, which we mentioned. Um, auto remove really just removes all the unused dependencies. So if you truly want to get rid of a package, what I typically do is I'll do purge and then do auto remove. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the entire thing is gone. There could be some uh, PNG files up behind. So you may want to go into your system, uh, come down to your, or your file manager, go into locations, go into computer, hit the search up here, and then type in whatever the uh, application was. And you'll see that there might be some files. There might be some legacy files and uh, different directories. And you, then you can go in there and manually remove those. Okay, so... Let's talk a little bit about setting up force password reset. Okay, so why do we want to set up force password reset? Well, if you're anything like me, you do your install, you set your passwords, get your system up and going, and then you forget to change your password and two or three years go by. The problem with that is that it does create a bit of a security risk for you. But there's a way around that. We can tell Linux to remind us and to force us to change our password after a specific set number of days. And it's very simple to do. Now, I've already done it on my system, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do it anyway. So we'll open up a terminal, and then you're going to want to type in sudo chage, one word, space, hyphen, capital M, and then a space, and then I use 60 days. Then we'll do a space, a hyphen, a cap, or lowercase m, another space, 10 for 10 days. And then we'll do a space, hyphen, capital W, a space, 14, and then type in your username. Hit enter and it'll affect the change for you. Now, I've already done that. So let's go ahead and show you how to check and see if everything is in order. To do that, we want to do sudo chage uh, space hyphen lowercase l, and then your username, hit enter, put in your password. Well, let me try it again. All right, so as you can see down here, uh, maximum days between password changes is 60, and I'll be warned after 14 days prior to the password actually expiring. So 60 days from October 19th, my password will expire. And 14 days before that, I will get a warning to let me know. And we do have a minimum number of days between password changes. So up here, I'll tell you when your password expires. So... December 18th, 2024, the system is going to force me to change my password. Again, very simple, very straightforward, and it's something that I encourage everyone to do, uh, changing your password with, you know, within 60 days, maybe 90 days. You can get away with 90 days. So if you want to do uh, 90 days, you do um, sudo apt, or I'm sorry, sudo chage. And then we do the hyphen capital M, then you put 90 days or 180 days, however many days you want. And then obviously, you know, you want to change it to maybe uh, 21 days uh, prior warning or seven days prior warning. You can adjust those numbers accordingly to whatever you want. Let's clear this out. Also too, speaking on passwords, you know, you do want to use a strong password and I, I keep a little notebook in my desk just so I can keep track of passwords. All right, so let's talk about disabling root login since we're here. I'm going to kind of combine these sections into one um, because they're so short. But disabling root, you don't really need to log in as root unless you're an administrator, and most of us are not. So with 99.9% .9 of the tasks that we're going to perform on our Linux desktop, we can do so with sudo. So there's really no need for you to log in as root. And having a root login available um, does open you up to a potential security risk. There's a very simple way to disable root login, and it, all you do is type in sudo passwd space hyphen l and root, hit enter, and you see password expire information has changed. So you can no longer log in as root. All right, so we talked about updating often, deleting unused apps. We talked about forcing password reset. We talked about disabling uh, root login. Now let's move on and talk about firewalls. Okay, so for firewalls, uh, for Pop! OS, and I'm not sure for Mint or Ubuntu, but I'm sure that most modern distros come with a firewall pre-installed. Uh, the difference is, is that uh, with Pop! OS, it's not active. You have to actually activate it yourself. 
uh, before you can actually use it. And there's a simple way of doing that, and that's what we're going to talk about. But the firewall that comes with Pop! OS, I believe, is UFW. So if you want to open up your terminal and type in sudo apt install UFW, hit enter, put in your password. And you can see it's already at the newest version uh, because it came with Pop! OS already pre-installed. So check your respective distro and see which firewall came uh, pre-installed with it. Now, I mentioned before that we have to activate it ourselves. And to do that is very simple. We'll go ahead and close out the terminal. We'll go into the Pop! Shop. And we want to do a search for an application called GUFW. And there it is, firewall configuration. Looks like a blue shield with a white stripe. Then you go ahead and hit install. And let me find it down in my utilities. Oh, well, I'm sorry, it's right here. So open up firewall configuration and type in your password. And here we go. So now once this opens up, uh, more than likely if, if it's your first time using it and you haven't already activated your firewall, the status over here will be um, gray. It'll be grayed out like that. All you do is click on it, turn it on, and you're good to go. So in this utility, uh, you can see you can set rules. Now, if you watched the video from uh, a couple weeks ago when we installed Android on Pop! OS, we actually had to open up a couple of ports to allow Android to communicate with the internet, and these are those ports. So these are those rules that we implemented back in that video. So they're showing up here. You can also check your report, and you can check your log as well, and you can have different profiles, uh, public, office, or home. Um, I leave mine at home, incoming, deny. I pretty much leave everything at default, haven't had any problems. So I don't want to get into too much what a firewall is. Um, you know, quite frankly, they've been around forever and most people know what they do and how they work and so on and so forth. But if you're interested, a quick Google search, there's plenty of guides out there that go through and speak to what firewalls do. Now keep in mind, I am a Linux nerd, but I'm not a systems administrator. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of this. And let's move on to our next topic, which is App Armor. Okay, so what is App Armor? Uh, so for a very brief description, it's a more or less a security module that's used to secure applications. It's somewhat similar to, or actually it is similar to SE Linux that's uh, used in Fedora and Red Hat. And it pretty much provides mandatory access control security, which in essence allows developers to restrict actions a process can take or, or do. And it's very likely that your distro already has it installed. I know Pop! OS does come with it pre-installed. And there are some profiles that come pre-installed with it, but you can add profiles of your own if you so choose. And the profiles are typically going to be stored in the Etsy, the Etsy directory. It's going to be under Etsy um, in the app armor.d directory, more specifically. And it was initially released back in 1998 and was originally developed by Immunix and then by SUSE and finally and currently now by Canonical. All right, so to install App Armor is pretty easy. Uh, and if you're using a Canonical product like Ubuntu, it's probably already installed. I know it came installed Pop! OS. But just in case, you open up your terminal and you type in sudo apt install app armor hit enter put in your password and let it do its thing and app armor is already the newest version so it's already installed on my machine now if you want to check the status of your app armor uh, you simply type in sudo app armor underscore status hit enter and you can go through and look at the details um, the very specific details on it and tells you how many processes are in mixed mode, um, how many processes are unconfined but have a profile defined, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera and so forth. Now, I may do a video in the future um, going into more detail in App Armor, and I do want to mention too that there are other utilities out there and other steps you can take for even more security. Uh, things like using Snort, which we did not cover in this video because I think that's a little bit more advanced than what we talked about today. What we talked about today is very basic, very rudimentary. Um, some very basic steps that you can take to increase the security of your Linux install. But again, there's even more advanced stuff that you can do. Um, so I might do a video on Snort down the road and uh, maybe a more in-depth video on App Armor. I think that would be kind of fun actually, putting that together. So I may do that in the future. But I do want to wrap this up by giving you a few pieces of advice on better OPSEC while you're out there. So, you know, for just basic privacy, you know, use a use the privacy browser like Brave or even DuckDuckGo. 
Uh, if you're going on the dark web, um, I spend a lot of time on the dark web. Now, I don't do anything nefarious, and I don't go to certain stores, but I just like surfing around and kind of messing around a little bit. Um, I always use a virtual machine when I do that. And I always turn off JavaScript. So make sure you're turning off JavaScript. And I recommend using a virtual machine, not just for the dark web, but if you're going to some websites that are somewhat, let's be, let's be honest, somewhat questionable, and you're afraid of catching a cold, well, use a virtual machine. That way, everything is confined to that virtual machine. And if something goes awry, you can delete the virtual machine and it doesn't affect your system at all. And I've got videos on virtual machines. They're extremely easy to use, extremely easy to set up. And there's really no reason that a, that a Linux user shouldn't have a hypervisor installed on their, on their machine. And as we've talked about in the past, um, you know, when it comes to sensitive documents like medical records, financial records, that sort of thing, or sensitive photos, don't use a cloud service to store those. Keep them local, keep them on a thumb drive, keep them on, on an external drive. Never, uh, never keep them in a cloud service where, they can, where it can be hacked. You know, if you wanna transfer those files back and forth, use something like KDE Connect. Um, it's peer to peer, so it goes from your phone directly to your PC or vice versa through your, through your local Wi-Fi. It's a safe way to move those documents around. And uh, this goes without saying, but if you sail the high seas, like the dark web, I sometimes sail the high seas. Just kind of see what's out there, right? Always use a VPN. Proton VPN is free. Uh, it does have a free option and it's extremely fast. It works really, really well. Now, I know there's a lot of discussions out there about VPNs and them not being as secure as something like Tor. But, you know, if you are looking for a couple of old uh, 3DS games, or maybe an old movie or something like that, I don't think you're gonna have too many problems. Finally, I wanna recommend that if you're, especially if you're new to Linux and you're still learning the commands, don't just copy and paste uh, the first set of commands that you can run across on the web and plug them into your terminal and hit enter. Um, unless you know specifically what you're looking at, it's never a safe bet. Always make sure that if you are looking up a how-to guide and how to do something like maybe set up your um, racing wheel on your Linux install. Make sure the site you're going to is reputable and then get the commands from there. All right, so I think that about wraps it up. Um, so I uh, thank you all for watching and I'm gonna get ready for this uh, Georgia, Texas game coming up. Pretty excited about that. Should be a good one. If you got some value out of this, please consider hitting like. And if you like these types of videos, um, you know, you don't mind helping me grow the channel, uh, please hit the subscribe button. And until then, um, I look forward to seeing in the next video, which should be episode 34, the Steam Library playthrough. And this will be the final, th this will be the remaining games of the entire library. And then after that, we'll have one more video doing a wrap up of the entire experience. And then, then we're gonna move on to uh, Lutris. So until then, thank you again. Have a great night. I hope to see you in the next video and stay safe out there.